Hi, I'm Apollonia. You may remember me from Purple Rain as leading lady to Prince, or from my band Apollonia 6. I've starred in films, TV shows, and I've been on the cover of magazines all over the world, including Playboy. I was also an LA Rams cheerleader. I'm going to take you with me. Welcome to my podcast, Apollonia Studio 6. Hi, I'm Apollonia, and welcome to Apollonia Studio 6, my podcast. To my right is my co-host and my partner in crime, Mr. Seth Nevelet. Mr. Seth. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being here today. Thank you. I'm excited today. I'm excited as well. We have family. Yes, we do. Would you introduce our family? Today on Apollonia Studio 6, we have the set design, mm -hmm. lighting design force behind all the Minneapolis acts that came out of Prince Camp, um, plus Lady Gaga, Paul McCartney, Ariana Grande, you name it, and he has set the mood and the tone and the stages for these superstars. And for you uh, Big Prince fans, you'll remember him as the leading man in Drive Me Wild and Sex Shooter. Yeah. <laughs> we are honored to welcome the one and only Mr. Leroy Bennett. Yeah. Hi, thank you. Good afternoon. Thank Good you afternoon. so much thank for you. being here. I'm so excited. <laughs> I'm going to have to say Roy. Yeah. Roy Bennett, a musical lighting visionary. I was reading about you, and there was so much I didn't know about you, my brother. But then I kept thinking of a time I was at L.A. County Museum, and it was a really beautiful exhibition about the Lumiere brothers, Auguste and Louis. And it was all on lighting and visuals. And I thought about you watching that. So when I was doing the research, I was like, well, I know who he is because he's like one of the Lumiere brothers. So <laughs> with, you know, your photography and equipment and cinema, uh, I don't even know where to start because... Like I said, there's just, your resume is unbelievable. Yes. So. It scares me when I look at it sometimes. <laughs> it like, was crazy. <laughs> it was like I couldn't print it out because there was not enough paper in California. <laughs> so I wrote, a prolific lighting and stage designer. You also direct documentaries and videos. You started as a singer. You're a fashionista. A lot. There's a lot here. So I want to ask you first, you were born in Rhode Island. So tell us about your life in Rhode Island. Um, I was reading that from the age of three to four, because your mother sang opera, you preferred classical music. And that at that age, you envisioned visuals with music. Yeah. How did, uh, <laughs> How does that happen? At well, it's been that way my whole life. Where I'm, anytime I hear music, I see music, whether it's colors or cinematic stuff. And I, I remember very distinctly uh, moments of when I was three or four years old, mm -hmm. when that first started. It started to click in, and all these—I mean, all these years—I've always thought everybody, when they hear music, they see it. But. Um, I mean, I've always had a passion for music, obviously, because of my mother. My father was also, they, my mom and father were into mu um, musicals as well. Mm. Um, not the kind of music I liked very much. It used to drive me crazy <laughs> yeah. when they said it. <laughs> but, um, and my father was an interior designer. So I had mm. both worlds of oh, music yeah. art. And, and, and art right. and visual. My father was very talented at what he did. Um, so, um, you know, I grew up in that, in in that atmosphere, in the where we lived from the time I was born till seven, uh, we grew up in this uh, tiny community. It was a private community in Rhode Island. It was a beach community. Mm. So in the um, winter time, there was no kids around because mm. everybody believed we were like the only family that kind of li lived in that in that area. So I'd have the beach and the in the whole neighborhood to myself, wow. and. Through that, I found myself having to create my own entertainment because 
Back then, there were no mm -hmm. such thing as cell phones and iPads and computers and all that stuff. You actually had to do things to entertain right, right. yourself. Right, exactly. So it was, it kind of, I think, started at that point of where my creativity, I guess, mm -hmm. started um, and things started to formulate. It wasn't um, until I was a teenager where I decided that I really wanted to get into the music industry somehow. I didn't yeah. know what I, whether what position or you know, what area that I was going to work in it, but mm -hmm. I just really wanted to be involved. And a lot of that stems from my father taking me to my first concert. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I was just blown away with the whole thing. It was like 1970. It's three Dog Night. Yeah, the Three Dog, dog Night. night. And Uriah Heep, he's uh, the two acts. I, I knew Three Dog Night, but I did not know Uriah Heep. And it was, right. it was, you know, a very um, loud rock, it, Where British was this? rock band. What town was this? In Providence, mm, at the so. Providence Arena. So yeah. when I walked in, it was back then. It was like all the really long hair, and the air smelled of patchouli mm -hmm. and pot and everything, and all the hippie kind of rock clothes of the era. And I was just like blew me away. It was like, wow, I'd never seen anything mm -hmm. like that before. And it really moved me. It was like going to church or a temple or something like that. So um, it was quite an experience. And that even triggered my enthusiasm to get involved with music even more. Mm -hmm. Who, when did you make the decision or was lighting and stage design your first decision or was it something else in the music industry? Well, I, I I tried out for a friend of mine's band in Boston as a singer, and within five minutes, I realized man, I didn't want to do that. I had severe stage fright. Okay, back then. Okay. But you sing. I can, but I don't like singing. Did you sing with your mother as a child? Once in a while. Would she coach she, you? Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. She really? would coach me, but I just I just could not sing in front of people. I just okay. didn't. Mm -hmm. have, <laughs> okay. I and. Because of that, I learned I just wanted to be, like they would say, I, I want to be on the other side of the camera. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I learned, I, I, well, when I graduated from high school, I met a band over the summer because I was working in a clothing store at that time. Mm -hmm. And uh, they, my manager's cousin had a party. And at that party with these, this, a band was originally from Rhode Island, but they lived in down Washington, D.C., and I met them, got along with them, great. And they said, hey, why don't you come down to the house, live with us, and we can move the gear around. I said, okay, fine, that's, yeah. that's cool. I'm going to live a rock style life. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, it was typical band house for, you know, everybody's jammed in there. I slept on the couch. Mm -hmm. um, but they had a little lighting system that they carried around, and I ended up taking care of it, setting it up. And that's where I realized, wow, I can perform musically without having to be on stage, but I can do it through lights. And that's where it all started. Wow. The canister. Well, it, no, they actually had something a little more advanced. They had okay. Fresnels. So okay. um, they had like maybe a dozen of them. Okay. That was it. And they had also flash pots. So okay. I used to do the pyro too at the same time. Okay. <laughs> oh, okay. my gosh. But um, uh, it, was, it, was, it was fun. I lasted about almost a year with them. Okay. I went back to Rhode Island. Okay. Got a job with a lighting company uh, mm -hmm. there and worked as a technician for them and did my first tour. Okay. What was your first tour? Uh, Boston. Ooh. Um, so, you know, I was the low guy in the totem pole okay. on that tour, but I learned a lot. Um, the lighting designer took me under his wing and kind of showed me how to, you know, do lighting plots and yeah. all of that. And... Um, I went from that company to a company out here, a company in L.A. called Zenith, as Zenith. we Americans say, or Zenith, okay. as the British say. Okay. So anyway, um, the director of the company took me out to dinner one night, and he, he said, uh, you know, he says, do you want to be more than a technician? I said, absolutely. I want to design shows. He says, well, the next client that comes through, I'll, I'll put your name forward. Mm -hmm. I said, awesome. So about a month or two later, he calls me and says, hey, I got a client that needs a designer, and his name is Prince. I said, oh, cool, all right. I didn't know who he was at the yeah, time. Yeah. I did a little bit of research, oh and God. I thought, wow, he's really interesting. Yeah. Um, and uh, so I flew from Rhode Island out to L.A. Um, 
met with he and Stephen Farnoli, his manager at the time. Yeah. Do you remember where you guys met? Uh, we were at, uh, he was shooting a video. <clears throat> can't remember which studio it was. It might have been Raleigh or something. It might have mm. been Raleigh Studios oh. at the time. Uh -huh. um, so then the there? next thing I know, I'm in Minneapolis doing rehearsals. My what God. phase was his career? What phase of his career was this in? That was Dirty Mind days. Dirty Mind. Oh, man. Okay. Okay. So you, so uh, had you, did you do the, the, the setup for Dirty Mind or you, you, the, or you, you started controversy? No, I, I did Dirty Mind. You did the Dirty Mind. Oh, yeah. The lights, you dirty is, thing, you. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The lights in them and all that yeah. sort of stuff. Yes. Okay. Um, it was, it was an I interesting tour. Story. I mean, well, yeah. my first five days with him was, Crazy. Okay. So you get to tell us. Tell exactly. us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was the toughest time of my life. Mm. I have to say. He, it was typical Prince. He would mm -hmm. push you to see how far you would, he could push you mm -hmm. before you broke. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, and, you know, he had me doing things that he didn't understand what he, what he was asking. He just wanted to see if I would do it. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I kept... <laughs> I mean, what is he doing to me? And, you know, I just kept going and, you know, I'd go back to the hotel room and I'd cry going, oh, fuck, you know, Aww. sorry. <laughs> it's okay. All right. It's okay. <laughs> Free speech here. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, it's just, I, I know I know what I'm doing and I don't, I just didn't understand what he was trying to do to me. But Bobby Z came up to me like after two or three days later and he just put his arm around me and goes, Man, listen, he does this to all of us. Don't worry about it. You'll be okay. You're doing a great job. Oh, man, Bobby Z. We yeah. love Bobby, yeah. our brother. Um, absolutely. So mm -hmm. and on the fifth day, Stephen Farnoli showed up and basically told Prince to ease off a little bit. Mm -hmm. And from <clears throat> that point on, he and I just got on, you know, got on. Well, we had a great relationship. We yeah. became creative partners yeah. at that point. How yeah. old were you at this point? <clears throat> was I 23? He You're was 21? 20, 23 yeah, years. Yeah, because I'm two years older than him. You're both wow. babies. Yeah, little kids. Yeah. And this is happening... I might have been 22 when he was 20. So you meet in L.A. Yeah, but then we did the rehearsals in Minneapolis. Mm -hmm. And then we went out on the tour, and at that point, it was not selling. We were doing small theaters, and, yeah. mm -hmm. and maybe 200 people would show up. Yeah. We had to eventually just shut the tour down. Mm -hmm. And then uh, a few months later, there was an article on Prince in the Rolling Stone, and it just you know was lit his. I mean, mm -hmm. it basically put a, <clears throat> lit the fire yeah. for his career, and we started doing clubs. Yeah, and it was just the reviews were insane, and the people like we'd play a two hundred, three hundred capacity room, and like two thousand people are outside. Wow, wow! So it was wild. It was fun, and that was that was the the beginning of the whole thing building up. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So your first assignment with him from that moment to what you're doing now, how how much time is that, you know, you, when you first start and then to the moment that you're talking about now, you're, are you talking like five, six months? Is it a year of, of you working with him so far up to date? Oh, uh, for the Dirty Mind tour? Mm -hmm. It was probably about five or six months. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, controversy, the controversy tour elevated, I think, as far, elevated him when it came to the stage design. Mm -hmm. I will say, and I know there have been many um, uh, lavish stages that you've done for him, like Love Sexy and all those sorts of great things. But I'm going to tell you, for me as a fan, and I was a little boy at the time, 10 or 11, the Venetian blinds are always my go-to. I mean, that was like the, you know, the Venetian blinds was like it for me. Oh. And, and and how did you come up with that idea? Well, I wanted to create something sexy. Mm -hmm. The first thing that I came up with, he liked but was deathly afraid of it, mm -hmm. uh, just because of uh, women's rights mm -hmm. attack mm -hmm. us, mm -hmm. uh, was a stage set... Much uh, inspired by Clockwork Orange in the Milk Bar. Mm -hmm. Oh with yes, the women, the the white. That's an amazing scene. Mm -hmm. So I wanted the whole stage set to be the risers 
women were holding up the risers and the guitar stands and all that stuff. And I wanted to project, have film projectors be up stage behind the band. Mm -hmm. Because I always, when I went to the movie theaters before moving lights, I used to always like, because people were smoking in the theaters, you'd see the beams moving. I Mm -hmm. thought, wow, that would be really cool to see all that going on behind the band. But at the same time, I wanted to, I wanted to project an orgy onto the audience. Oh, <laughs> so, oh man, it's like Caligula. Uh-huh. So, oh man, he liked. I mean, he, he really liked it. He goes, "We can't do that." <laughs> so I, Prince I, said that. Yeah. Wow, he said that. Really, yeah. we can't. He, he even said, knew. He, was, he says, "I really like it, but I'm a little nervous about that." Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, um, I always felt that, that um, Venetian blinds were kind of a. Uh, kind of a sexual kind of visual mm-hmm. thing. Mm-hmm. Um, so I thought, yeah, we'll go down that road. Yeah. And, it, and I, what I like architecturally about it too, it was clean and simple. Yeah. And um, so it was, that was the beginning of, because yeah. we used the set twice. Yes. Controversy and, and I, in 1999. Yeah, and I upgraded it for yeah. 1999. Yeah, because 1999... Uh, is that when you got the poll, or was that um, that was, or was that that was a controversy? When you got the poll. What we did was I automated the blinds so that they can move, not the mm-hmm. ones in the, the actual risers, yeah. but the ones behind. Yeah. And then I put mirror on it so we could it would kind of reflect the lights behind oh, it. Oh yeah, do all that kind of streaky yeah. fun yeah. stuff. Yeah, and you also did the setups for the time. Yes, and the, uh, um. and and I, the 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 it's kind of self explained for the building. From the first album yeah, cover. Yeah, it was right off the album cover. And uh, and what was your inspiration for the pink and the fishnet for Vanity Six? Such Se- great questions. Sexy fishnet stockings. Yes. Oh, <laughs> man. Yes. yes. But it was actually a cargo net. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> well, you have to do things in a large scale. Yeah, with your... <laughs> definitely. 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 Wow, wow. Well, while we're on Vanity Six, Let's, I guess. Yeah, we want to know. Uh, for... for for the fans out there, and most people know that Roy uh, was married at that time to Brenda Bennett. Brenda Mosher. Brenda yeah. Mosher. Then she became Brenda Bennett. Brenda and Bennett. then she became <laughs> Brenda Bennett. Well, I met Brenda when that band, the band from DC, Tombstone. that was tell, I was telling you about. The, yeah, the, oh, yeah. 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 Well, she was dating one of the guys in the band, so okay. that's how I met her. Oh. Okay. And so we were friends for a number of years before things happened. I see. <laughs> I see. Wow. Yeah, uh, it was uh, 1975, 76. Yeah. Oh, man, the bicentennial year. Yeah, well, yeah. we actually did a bicentennial show in D.C. Oh, wow. Really? Yeah, it was crazy. They wrote this whole thing, and it was, it was fun. Oh. Cool. They're actually find, a talented bunch of guys. Got to find that article. Oh, man. Um. So did she go out with you when you did your first assignment with Dirty Mind? No, she was out on... Um, Controversy. Okay. And she was helping in the, uh, the dressing rooms, the wardrobe, mm-hmm. and stuff like that. And Prince and I were just talking, and then he started mentioning about a girl group. Mm-hmm. And um, he knew that Brenda could sing, because I guess she'd probably be singing while she was working in the dressing room and stuff. And uh, he turned around, and he goes, you can be one of the girls. Mm. And What so, was her reaction? Do you remember? Went, what? <laughs> 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 oh my god so yeah next thing we know she's in minneapolis with susan and vanity recording and so this when he said this this was already in minnesota or is this in no LA? we were on tour oh on, on the road, t- on the road. Yeah. Yeah. i see how did you feel when prince said okay i want your wife to be in this group and i want her to be in this group and Underwear. <laughs> I knew yeah. you were going to Yeah, that. yep. And now you're in a relationship with um, her. Yikes. It was a little awkward. I have to admit, it was, mm-hmm. it was tough at times. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, I dealt with it. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. I've read uh, articles in the past that you've done on uh, different books and things like that. And, and, um, um, you talked about how when the girls got together and became a group, how some how it wasn't always harmonious. Oh, no. Especially <laughs> between Denise and oh, Brenda. Brenda. Yeah. You're asking. <laughs> well, I mean, Brenda was the only one that could sing. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. And Prince would put the burden of the 
vocals on on to Brenda, mm-hmm. and so she would have to, you know, push push Denise along, mm-hmm. and uh, it, it got heated a couple of times. There was a serious fight at one of the shows. At, at, they were back in their dressing room, and I think Brenda had, Brenda had Denise up against the wall. Prince had to come. He goes, can't you control your wife? <laughs> <laughs> I said, well, you know, it's like it is, it, I, you know, well, I'm obviously pushed Brenda a little uh, bit too far. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Was that, in, was that a, you know, was that a um, kind of a, a, a difficult, could that be a difficult situation with your wife being in the group and his girlfriend being in the group mm. and, you know, at times them not particularly seeing eye to eye. And, you know, uh, I'm sure there was, you know, on Denise's and probably some ego there, mm-hmm. you oh, know. Yeah. And <laughs> middle. <laughs> I'm sure of it. And, and so, you know, did that ever kind of, spill over into your relationship with Prince or was it always, did he always kind of keep it separate? No, he always kept it separate. You know, I mean, that was the only time he came up to me and said something because it was probably the most intense moment that ever happened between the two of them. There was always tension, but... Girl fight! Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Girl stuff. (laughs) I mean, there was the amount of stuff anyway that was going going on all the time, not just with those girls, but everything. With everything and everybody. Oh, yeah, Mm -hmm. it it was... Always, always a fun time. <laughs> <laughs> it was so fun. <laughs> they were so nice to each other, as Jill would say. Oh man! And Jill was there, yeah, at the time. Yeah. So how was that oh, with I love the girls her. and Jill? Oh, we love Jill, our sister, so much. Um, Behind the know, curtain. She, yeah, I mean, she was going through her own thing mm-hmm. at that yeah. time too. I mean, yeah. he would just set the whole thing up and just watch it, watch, watch it, it play happen. out. It Dude, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah, he liked that. He liked the drama, oh, the yeah. control. Yeah, well, like just marionettes. Stimulation. Yes, yes, that's true. He probably thought it was creative mm-hmm. stimulation, is competition. Well. Oh yeah, fighting. Oh yeah, more like a foreplay. A little yeah. bit. Yeah, like a foreplay. Yeah. You know, it's some a, sexual foreplay thing, and then and then the stage is the the, sex. the main event. Yeah, and the music. Yeah, the stage totally. is the main event. The music is a big O. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Where are we going that. with this conversation? I can see that. We, can go <laughs> hey, we can keep going. Trust me. Yeah. <laughs> so going back to Denise, what? Wh- how did you see her? You know, back then, and I mean, just so young and beautiful, and I mean, she was beautiful, but uh, uh, you know, she she had her ego, and mm-hmm. uh, what happened with a lot of people that pass through that camp is mm-hmm. that they would lose themselves quite easily because he would mm-hmm. build them up into a Right. Uh, you know a certain this state creation. of mind yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. and uh and where they started to believe these things that he would tell them mm-hmm. and get lost and then suddenly they feel that they have all the power they you know it's that they're more important than everybody else and right. it's like oh dear and i would watch that happen time and time again mm-hmm. and it was it, they'd come and go and that's kind of what happened. I've never heard anybody say that before. And, yeah. And I've said that, you know, he had this, the ability that he would, like, put me on a pedestal. Yeah. You know, treated me like a mother figure, like, you know, you know, and it was a big responsibility and made me quite nervous, too. Yeah. You know, because I knew that there was a lot of uh, animosity from the others. Right. Because I'm, you know, a new person on the block. You know, Jill said that, he would run, you know, like he would run you through the machine. Mm-hmm. It's like creating the monster. He would create the, because we talked about how she looked when she first got there and that she transformed into this Marilyn Monroe mm-hmm. bombshell and all that. And she, she would call it, you know, I, I went through the machine. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And he would, he would take these people and create these characters and create these mm-hmm. personas. Um, how did you end up being the leading man in Drive Me Wild? Well, <laughs> he, um, he would always, I, I know he, he was serious, but also he, he, he was all, I think he was fascinated by me because 
um, not just because of what I did for him, but just who I, you know, my fashion sense and just mm-hmm. the things that, you know, I was, I was into all the new romantic music and all that stuff. And so. Your look, your hair. <laughs> <laughs> what sign are you? Gemini. Me oh, too. June snap. 5th. Help. Okay, so I get it. I got Help. it. I get it. Okay. He's surrounded by four men. Uh-huh. I know, right? Yep. There's a sandwich That's between right. four men. Yep, exactly. Thank <laughs> right. you. Um, at one point, said, hey, I, I want to do an album with you. I said, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, that's uh, not what I do. Uh-huh. I said, you know what I do for you. Mm-hmm. I like to be off the stage. I don't want to be on the stage. Thank you very much. Yeah. Um, but he would push me into the videos. Uh-huh. So mm-hmm. it got me into Drive Me Wild and then, of course, Sex Shooter. Sex Shooter, right. yeah. yeah. But he always paired me up with Susan. Yes. Yeah. That's interesting. I didn't have a problem with that. Yeah. <laughs> little Susan. Oh, God. I had a crush on her. <laughs> gorgeous, gorgeous. Why little, do you think he paired uh, you up with Susan instead of Brenda? Um, Brenda would have been too obvious, I think. Mm. Um, the contrast, maybe, The contrast too, yeah. was probably good. Um, and even a little controversial at that mm-hmm. time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. Oh no! I yeah. like I said, I had a serious crush on her. Yeah. Oh. That's Even though it. I was married, I know that was terrible. <laughs> <laughs> but you're, you couldn't help it. Just a man, you know. <laughs> She's still just beautiful. A, yeah, yeah. to this still day. Unbelievable. Um. So. I feel like I'm taking over. Do you no, go ahead, I'm please. Okay. No, just I'm I'm <laughs> fascinated. So many <laughs> Keep going. <laughs> so. You do you remember kind of like when the what the what the environment was kind of with the big fallout with Jam and Lewis and then Oof. with Denise and what was the environment like in the organization at that time? Um, it was it was tense. Mm-hmm. You know, you know, Jimmy and Terry went off to do their own thing, and of course they missed the show, and that was the yeah. the beginning of the end. Yes, mm-hmm. um, it wasn't surprising to me when these things would happen, uh, just because of how they've developed, mm-hmm. how things were in the machine, how the machine formulated things, yeah. Yeah. that it was bound to happen at some point. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and particularly. When people have certain talents, Jimmy and Terry, you know, that they they deserve to do their own thing. Yeah. And it was, you know, I'm sure they would have only lasted so long because they didn't want, as much as they respected Prince, they didn't want to be under his thumb. Right. And um, and there were people, that, the thing, there was a lot of that over the years. There was people that thought that they didn't, appreciate the gift that they, he gave them and the opportunity he gave them. They thought that's when they started to lose themselves and think they could be more than what they were. Mm-hmm. Some of them survived. Mm-hmm. Some of them didn't. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Were you shocked when Vanity kind of pulled the trigger right at that moment? Vanity 6 had gotten to a point where they were stars in their own right and had a hit song and <clears throat> you know, the uh, crest well, of I, the movie. Was I shocked? No. Okay. No, it did not surprise me at all. You saw the warning signs. Did you see yeah. warning signs? Yeah, I mean, signs? her ego was out of control at that point, mm-hmm. you know. And I don't see how the girls could have t- continued, anyways, with the tension. Mm-hmm. It wasn't nice, and it was just so. It was almost like a relief. I got you. Wow. I got you. Wow! 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 And then you showed up. And then I step in there, and they're like, <laughs> "What the." F- <laughs> Mother, father has walked in here <laughs> for the love of God. Oh, it was a breath of fresh air. Oh, thank you. That was, and it was great. I mean, going back to, you know, I'm going to skip ahead to sex shooters. So then I come on the scene, I meet Roy. I think he's just absolutely just adorable, wonderful, charming. And I'm like, you know, there's a character, you know, Roy, Leroy, Roy. And then I see that he's doing the lights. And I was like, mm-hmm. and then it's like, he's married to Brenda Bennett. <laughs> <laughs> right? You know. And, uh, you know, we're there with Donald Thorne, right? Mm-hmm. Cinematographer and uh, Craig Denault, cameraman. And 
this group of like super cool people. They were all young. Of course, you know, Donald Thorne was an older gentleman, but everybody was like, like, you know, Roy, all young and sexy and, mm -hmm. you know, things were like happening and uh, I was just like pleasantly surprised. It was, you know, he's lighting mm -hmm. the stage and all this talent rolled up into one young man. Yeah. So anyways, I walk on the scene, you know, and I meet this charming gentleman uh, and then the next thing I know, we're recording. We make this incredible movie, and uh, we are in the studio. I'm doing the song Sex Shooter that was written for Vanity Six with her vocal on the demo, which I believe I still have somewhere put away in my archives. And then we end up in Los Angeles. At that point, I remember giving Prince a lot of composites uh, for photographers that I knew out here in Hollywood. And then there was a uh, Cloutier, all the agencies. And I remember I found a, a video and information on a Latino director, choreographer named Kenny Ortega. So I asked Prince, I said, I'd, that's the guy that you know, should do the video. And then Simon Fields approved that. So I was really thrilled that I was able to like kind of discover, you know, Kenny Ortega. <laughs> and then we're in LA, you, Brenda, Susan Moonsey, and my brother George Cotero, who happens then to be my leading man, which is really gross, gnarly, because <laughs> I have to flirt. Like a sister act. <laughs> yeah, with my brother and all this stuff, you know, and... <laughs> And we're shooting, and we're out there shooting. What was that like for you? I mean, now you're making a video with your wife, and you're with her. They paired you with her again this time, no? Or was it with Susan? Susan. With Susan. Yeah, I, I picked her up and spun her in. That's right. <laughs> hey, I, was I in that video? <laughs> That's right. You pick her up, and then George... With Brenda, that's right. Hey, your friend and all that. Oh, that's... Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that was so fun. So think back. What memories do you have, good and bad? Of that? Yeah, of that video. Um, Because we shot outside, and then we shot interiors. And you had to dance. Yeah, I had to dance. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was a little embarrassing, but... Um, but you know, it was just part of what it was just like another thing Prince would have me be, you know, uh -huh. it's like, all right, here we go again, uh -huh. something else, uh -huh. something doesn't necessarily apply to me, but I'll do it, whatever you want, dude. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> so, he was great, it was just fun, yeah, you were great in it. Your hair it was an excuse to buy a new outfit, too. You had yeah, blue on, no, yeah, it was blue, a blue it was the pants and the shirt were by a company called Parachute, who were kind of a... Yes. Oh, yeah. Of the, course. The, the mm -hmm. kind of interesting, cool, new, romantic... Right. Wow. And your hair oh, yeah. is like long, oops, full red. On John reddish. Taylor style. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's right. And then we shot indoors in some warehouse. Yeah. And my brother's doing the sax, playing, pretending to. Right. Sliding in leather pants. <laughs> That belonged to who the man that I was dating at the time, Kevin Bernhardt. So he like <laughs> slit the hell out of them and ruined them. Um, do you remember how long it took us that day? Was it the whole day that we shot or two Pretty, days? No, it was one day. One day. I'm pretty sure it was Downtown just one LA. day. Yeah. Man, when you look back, do you ever look back at the video? And if you do, what do you feel? <laughs> <laughs> I usually show the video to people and go, you won't believe this. <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> and what do they say? say? Well, they 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 usually go, "Oh my god, <laughs> that's just that's hysterical." Cool. For me, it's it's goofy. Yeah, I mean, it's not the song; it's goofy. But just me doing that was just very funny. That's too cool. Did um? So let's talk. Let's get back on um, some stage design. Mm -hmm. How had things changed from the nineteen ninety? Nine to to the Purple Rain tour, as far as budget, as far as vision, as far as, and what was your vision for the Purple Rain tour after the the, the movie and uh, soundtrack became so huge? Well, I mean, it was. I mean, technology mm -hmm. had uh, 
jumped. I mean, that was when between 1999 and Purple Rain is when uh, moving lights, mm -hmm. very lights started. Mm -hmm. So that was a whole new technology. And it kind of was one thing that got me closer to what was in my head. Yeah. And, you know, it's, it's happened over the years yeah. as technology keeps increasing and developing how things that I've always wanted to do can start to happen. So that was, it was, um, it was the addition to the very lights to the show, um, the stage itself with the, all the hydraulic lifts mm -hmm. and the props or the bathtub yeah, and, tough. You know, and the piano popping up out of the stage, and um, it, it was trying to create an atmosphere that would could evolve over the course of the, the show. So every song was its own kind of unique thing. Yeah, um, sound like musical theater. It was kind of the beginning. Mm -hmm. I mean, actually, that started in a very simplistic form mm -hmm. in controversy, and it just kept adding, getting yeah. more and more complex yeah. as we moved down the road yeah. of, of mm -hmm. tours. Yeah. Yeah. What was your favorite set you ever did for him? I would have, well, it's a toss up between Love Sexy and uh, Sign of the Times. Mm, yes. I mean, Sign of the Times was pretty cool for mm -hmm. what it was. Yes. The big heart. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. You know, it was, it was fun because I had all those neon uh signs yeah. not fun to travel with because yeah. they constantly we had a truck full of spares because they would break <laughs> all the time travel. and no matter how <laughs> we had them made so mm -hmm. that they take shock mm -hmm. they'd always break um you know it was it, it for me it was a shame it never came to america mm -hmm. and it kind of then separated him out where he was you know people you know americans they they lose interest in things so fast. You know, it's easy come, easy go. Yeah. And um, I think had he come back, Love Sexy Tour would have been done better. Mm -hmm. um, um, but, you know, I mean, we had our, our whole life over in Europe, which was fun. Yeah. But, but uh, yeah, those, those are my two favorite sets. The, the, I mean, the Love Sexy set was super complicated yeah. i mean as far as doing it, it first of all it was the first time i'd ever done an in the round show but yeah. anybody had done an in the round show that was that theatrically technology wise yeah. complicated yeah. and it was i think i had like 28 or 30 follow spots that i used to have to call yeah and he messed with me one time really i, I think he just knew when to do it too because mm. it was <laughs> He uh, was a, quite a complicated cue to call and set up. Yeah, and uh, because I'm always I, I'm running things in real time, but thinking ahead and calling things right. ahead of time. Yeah, and so I had this cue that I had to call, and right about when I was supposed to call, he goes, "Hey, Roy, put a spotlight on my boot." And I was like, "Dude!" And so it's like I had stop. Then it's like yeah. pick up his shoes, pick up his shoes, because if I didn't, he'd call me out on it. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, oh my god. <laughs> But he would yeah. mess with people all the time like yeah. that. Yep. What did you think the... How had things changed with the loss of the revolution and this new group that he had? How do you think that affected him or affected the show? Or what were your thoughts on that whole thing? So that seems to be a big um, point in his career. It was a loss of his family. Mm -hmm. You know, it was <clears throat> his only real band. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a lot of great musicians that have passed through there yeah. since then, but it, was, it wasn't so much the musicianship as an actual band yeah. Yeah. and a family. And we were his family at that point. And, you know, it was, I think for him, when that started to fall apart, it was like, he lost his family, and I think he lost trust. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, there, it was it was a whole different atmosphere after that. It was just a revolving door of different people. Yeah. Um, I mean, the, the 
you know, Sign of Times and Love Sexy, it was great, yeah. you know, as far as the music and the musicians and stuff. But the vibe was different. Yeah. It was all kind of like he then started to remove himself. One thing that I always thought, and this is just a, uh, just a, uh, you know, thought that I had in my head was, it seemed like he would lose pieces as, of himself as people left. Mm-hmm. That's true. You know what I mean? Jam and Lewis leave. Right. And then Denise leaves, then Morris leaves, then you leave, and mm-hmm. then... The revolution's gone. It just seems like it maybe made him a little more stoic or harder or as mistrusting as yeah. you said. Um, because I've always said, you know, from just from, you know, my mom's career in Parliament Funkadelic, before Parliament Funkadelic mm-hmm. was huge and then after Parliament Funkadelic mm-hmm. became huge, is that, and this is no disrespect to anybody, but the people that are there for you before you're a superstar. Right. And before you're mm-hmm. Prince, Purple Rain Prince, mm-hmm. you know, are really the ones that were fighting in the trenches with you at, and doing the work so you could become mm-hmm. this guy. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I, I, I could definitely see where you're coming from as far as, you know, that's why I asked the question about how did things kind of change after they left because... Yeah, yeah, but you're right because you and I, all of us, uh, we gave him, you know, pieces of our lives, of ourselves. So I believe then at that point, like you stated, when we left, you know, that was gone. Yeah. You know, because he, you know, we were part of his life. Yeah. And we were all like children. He was, you know, the big daddy. Yeah. So all of a sudden the kids are gone. So there's a piece of like, mom, oh, that son, that daughter. And, you know, of course there's loss for yeah. dad. Yeah. And then, you know, there is a, there, I think there's a shift as well as, you know, people become, can become, can become. And this is only a person, you know, something in my head is that sometimes it becomes less family and more employee mm-hmm. relationship. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, the relationship uh, changes, the dynamics of the relationship change, so. What's 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 the last tour you did with him? <clears throat> last thing I did, well, I left in 1994. Okay. Um, wow. It was after his birthday party at the Glam Slam. We were in Miami. Mm-hmm. Um, I left because I was tired of all these new people, particularly the bodyguards, mm. because mm-hmm. you know I'd go off and do other work with other artists and then come back. And of course, they didn't know who I was. He didn't have the foresight to say, hey, this is Roy. This is, you know, yeah, you know, we're close. He does it's all this family. stuff for me. His family. Right. And so, I, you know, these guys would push me around. They'd tell me I couldn't stand in the hallway. And it's like, oh, wow. and it was just, it, it got really bad at, at that one mm-hmm. event. And I just, I had enough. And I just, as he came out and got into limo, I said, this is the end for me. I'm leaving. Mm. He go. He, uh, he like. He just couldn't believe it. I said. I. I said. These assholes mm-hmm. have no respect for me. They don't know who I am. Right. And they're pushing me around. I said. I can't do this anymore. I said because it was like mm-hmm. at that time prior, he didn't want to. Like they'd be new business managers and stuff like that. I'd have to deal with them because yeah. they'd all mm-hmm. think they could save the day right. financially. Right. And it's like, eh, no. Yeah. I'm telling you, it's not me spending the money. I'll spend mm-hmm. it. But it's because he wants it and he expects it. If he right. says, this is what I want, it has to happen. Yeah. Right. And so it was like always, there was a battle constantly with new management, business managers, the whole thing. So it was just like after a while. And he would tell me sometimes, what, you tell them what to do. And it's like, no, mm-hmm. <laughs> it's your, yeah. it's, it's they, your they, show. They, that's your right. stuff. Right. You know, wow. if they, they, you know, if you, I can't tell them how to manage you. Right. He said, you tell them. Right. And, or at least tell them that you have the authority to do it. Yeah. But if it doesn't come from him, it doesn't mean anything. Right. Yeah. I mean, he would stand up for me, but yeah. it was just, but I'd have to go through the process. Right. So I got, it kind of wore me down after a while. Yeah. You know, and it was, things were getting kind of weird. Yeah. 
it wasn't, I mean, I stuck it out as long as I could after the revolution. And I just, it just felt like the balloon was deflating. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. it, and as much as I loved him and respected him, you know, I just, I could not, I could not, I didn't feel I was in the atmosphere of where I could be fully creative mm -hmm. and what I had done with him before. Yeah. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. So it's like the winds of change. Mm -hmm. I understand how you felt because I felt similar. And, you know, you were there longer before me and stayed longer. And for me, when, you know, I stepped out of the, the purple, I call it the purple cloud, it was just like a, <gasps> you know, like coming out of Lake Minnetonka, you know, and not <laughs> having any breath for, you know, a long time, right? Finally taking a deep breath. I was looking at this here. It says, Roy's resume is out of this world. Madonna, the Confessions Tour Live. Madonna's Sticky and Sweet Tour. Madonna, I'm going to tell you a secret. The Super Bowl 2014. Ramstein. Ramstein. I, I did the McCartney's halftime. Tony Bennett. Uh, uh, Beyonce's halftime. Mm. Bruno's halftime. And Gaga's halftime. Oh. Nine Inch Nails. <laughs> yeah, one of my favorites. Wow. Prince. And Prince loved Trent Reznor. We had conversations about Nine Inch Nails. Really? He loved his creativity. You're right. They were very much the same. Yeah. And, but Trent told me that he was in the studio one time, whatever, I can't remember which recording studio it was, <clears throat> and he wanted to say hi to Prince. Prince totally blew him off. No. But that was typical of Prince because if he had respect for him, he probably didn't, wouldn't want to show it. Yeah. yeah. He said, yeah, he totally dissed me. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Oh, wow. But <laughs> because no. Trent absolutely loved him. And Prince loved him. Yeah. You know. It's so, but normal, typical Prince. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's that power thing, you. right? I'm not going to tell you. But yeah, just, <clears throat> we talked about the videos and the direction and the lighting and, you know, he asked me, what do you think? And he asked me, he goes, do you think he's handsome? And I was like, yeah, Trent Reznor is hot. <laughs> I got to meet him when he opened up for David Bowie, you know, and I went there to see Bowie, but when I met, you know, I have the photo of Trent myself, I was like... Hello. <laughs> Hello. You that, was a up? that was a crazy show we did. Oh, because, yeah. Because it was just a one continuous show. Of, there was yeah. no set change. Wow. They, so they, they cross-pollinated between when Nine Inch Nails started the show, uh -huh. and then gradually Bowie's band came out. No, he would come out, and then Bowie would sing with Nine Inch Nails, yeah. and they'd do back and forth some each other's songs, and then gradually some of the Nine Inch Nails Musicians would leave the stage or pull the drums off the keyboards, and the things would shift, but it never stopped. It never stopped, so you had to do it all while the show was going. Yeah, like musical Jeez. theater. <laughs> Jeez. You did. Uh, this is, was really amazing. America tribute to the heroes. Uh, this was uh, for all the. This is actors and musicians that honored all the fall, fallen heroes uh, for the nine eleven. Yeah, that was the disaster. first time there was a broadcast of of. I mean, it was um, obviously it was almost like radio silence right. uh, up During until that, time. that point. Yeah. And I was, I was back in Rhode Island at that point. I took a, a train down into New York. Mm -hmm. That was the weirdest thing ever. Yeah, it was like wow. a week after, a week and a half after. I think I, yeah, we're seeing that. So I did, I did the New York uh, broadcast, and then uh, I'm trying to remember who did the the uh, was it Jeremy Railton did the. Um, L.A. L.A. West Coast. Yeah. What is Gaga like to work with? Oh, my God. She's one of my favorite people in the entire world. Isn't that uh, great to hear that? She is fucking amazing. Awesome. She's, I mean, it's, there's a lot going on all the time, mm -hmm. but she's one of the most beautiful human beings I've ever met. She's so sweet. So incredibly talented, like blows my mind. Yeah. I mean, that girl can sing anything. Yeah. She can sing circles yeah. around anybody. It's, yeah. it's insane. Yeah. And and a and a pianist, and she's just so good. Yeah. You know, I had, <clears throat> wow. I've been working with her for almost eleven years now. Wow. Wow. And ask him who he just saw. Who did he just come? Who did you just come back? We just in Europe, right? Were you, you just in Europe? Oh, you mean... You. You were just traveling in Europe? Mm, oh, 
I was in Europe, but you were talking about what you did last this, night. Last night, oh, oh. yeah. Tell oh. us what you what he did last oh, night. Oh, that guy. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> I've been working with him for twenty years. It's Paul McCartney. Wow. Wow. Um, Sir Paul. He's going to be eighty next month. No. Totally. No. Time flies. He sure doesn't does. look it. <laughs> no. Yeah. yeah. Great. And he, he plays for about two hours and forty minutes. Um, that was last night. Yeah. Thank we, you. You're here today. This yeah, is what an so honor. We, we played SoFi Stadium last so night. How long did he play for? Two hours and 40 minutes. How many songs total? About 38 songs. Holy. Wow. Wow. Yeah, he never leaves the stage. He knows all his lyrics. He doesn't have a teleprompter? I'm not going to say. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I just bought my own teleprompter, people. <laughs> I did. It's, it's amazing. You know, he, he plays... When you... Hear all these songs, yeah. the catalog of music that he has is just phenomenal. Yeah. And the musical history wow. is wild. And he, he sings with uh, John Lennon on stage, which is the wildest wow. thing. Oh, man. Wow. Wow. Uh, Peter Jackson, because it was for the song I Got a Feeling, and Peter Jackson took the footage from the, the Get Back mm -hmm. um, series. Mm -hmm. When they were singing on the rooftop, right, and stripped out all the other audio except for John's voice, so John's on the screen singing his part mm. as Paul's singing along with him. It's crazy. Wow, you're that gonna have to great. watch that. He was just so emotionally moved by the whole thing. Really, and I went up the stage. He goes, "I got to sing with my friend." Oh man! And how was the uh, audience reaction when they start singing? Well, I mean, it's when they see John come up on the screen oh. and you hear, <gasps> oh. and they all, they all cheer. And, oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. And then we have awards. Four Emmys, nominations. No, I've got nom nominations. I nominations. I don't, I'm, I'm not part of the boys club, so I'll never get oh. one. No, you will. <laughs> the Game Awards. Those are the industry's most prestigious award. The Night of Illumination Award. <laughs> this is for your work on the Lady Gaga, the Art and Pop Ball Tour. Yeah, I got a full on. They give you a sword. Oh, a wow. Machete, a real sword. <laughs> wow. <laughs> like a night sword. It's really heavy. Oh, this wow. is really dope. <laughs> 2018 inducted into the Music Hall of Fame in Rhode Island. And then this one, the Parnelli Award 2015, Set and Scenic Designer of the Year for the Maroon 5 Tour. What does it feel like to have your peers acknowledge? Your hard work. No, oh, it's always wonderful. I mean, it's it's an honor. I mean, it's a big deal. Yeah. You know, and it's it's. I, you know, I just love what I do. I'm blessed to be able to do what I did. And my career is just. I've been, you know, I've had an incredibly blessed career, and a lot of it. You know, being able to bring so much joy to people around the world mm -hmm. is a, you know, that's, it's a, it's a beautiful gift to be able to be given to do that. Yeah. Um, you know, and it's just, I, when I design these shows and when I do these things, you know, for me, it's not only just for the audience, but the, all the hard work the crew mm -hmm. goes through every day to put those shows up and I make sure that they, they love what they're part of. Yeah. You know, that you know, that their hard work is actually worth the worth the effort. Yeah. And so, you know, and just having I I don't I don't see myself and where I am in my career and I just I do what I do. Yeah. And so when I'm honored like that, it's it's a big deal to me. Uh, which brings to me the fact that Roy is a fashionista. <laughs> I Close was horse. online and I saw this beautiful site called Forward, one of my favorite sites for fashion, and he's showing off his clothes. His yeah. selections, they yeah. were fantastic. Your attire. <laughs> Tell us just some of the designers that you like. Well, I'm I'm always been very much into being an individual. Mm -hmm. Um a lot of this, the designers that I like are more kind of obscure, although I do have a respect for a lot of the big houses and stuff mm -hmm. like that. I mean, th I mean, I've, you know, I, if out of the big houses like Prada, I like 
um, like some of the stuff from Bottega Veneta. Mm-hmm. Uh, I like Yoji Yamamoto is one of my favorite mm-hmm. designers. Uh, I've been collecting his stuff since the early 80s. Okay. Um, Comme de Garçon, mm-hmm. uh, a really obscure designer called Carol Christian Paul. He's a Austrian designer. All his stuff's all handmade, mm-hmm. only very limited numbers of pieces that he makes. Um, what else? I mean, there's, there's – I could keep going on and on. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love to venture into his closet. I, I have more clothes than any man should have. <laughs> that is so cool. Wow. That's impressive. I got a lot, too. That's impressive. <laughs> And uh, I wanted to ask, would you ever direct a feature film, like an actor's non-musical movie? Sure. Yeah? Yeah. I've, cool. it's, people have asked me, I mean, I've been, people suggest that I should do music videos for, mm-hmm. for a long, long time. People mm-hmm. say, why don't you just do it? It's like, I didn't think I was ready at the time. Mm-hmm. You know, I overthought things. I don't know if you just get into it. Do I, it. I do it, but yeah, yeah, you should. David Fincher, yeah, when he started directing Trent, I remember he said, That guy's gonna make big movies. And then the next thing I saw was seven, I was like, oh, I discovered him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, one question, um, where were you April 21st, 2016, when you found out that our oh. friend had transitioned? I was in Taiwan. Taiwan, okay. Um, I was devastated. I felt mm-hmm. my heart had been ripped out of my chest. Mm-hmm. I felt lost because I was so far away that I couldn't, I couldn't get there. I couldn't mm-hmm. be there. Couldn't. Mm-hmm. Um, I cried for two weeks every day. Mm-hmm. Um, it's hard. Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry for your loss. You that one. I need water. What are your future? Oh, what are your future <laughs> projects? <in plan? laughs> look like suture. My suture project. What are your suture oh, projects? Yeah. Plans? <laughs> <laughs> what are your future projects and plans? Um. Well, um. Right now, um, even I'm out in and out of Paul's tour at the yeah. moment, but um, I'm just finishing up Lentil. Details on Gaga's stadium tour coming up in July. Okay. Ooh. Um, there's a bunch of little projects here and there. I've been over during lockdown. It was just occupying my mind and time. I actually enjoyed it yeah. personally. I know it was yeah. tough times for people, but yeah. it was just for me, it was a blessing because mm-hmm. I'd been circling the world for 42 years. I'd mm. never been home. Yeah. Didn't get, I didn't know my neighbors, yeah. <laughs> didn't know my community. But I, I started um, working on uh, like art installation projects, mm. some concepts and stuff. So that may be coming at some point. Okay. Nice. Right. Love to go to your exhibition. Yeah. That'd if you ever awesome. need an apprentice, I'm a little <laughs> old for apprenticeship, but <laughs> no. just saying. <laughs> so the last part of our show, I like to ask our guests uh, 10 questions. So I'm going to just shoot you with some rapid fire questions. Tell me one thing that most people don't know about you. Wow. Um I love cooking. Oh. We're Best coming dish. Up. We're coming over. Oh, I can I'll <laughs> attempt anything. Damn. <laughs> What's the greatest part about being Roy Bennett? My life and being able to be work with some of the most amazing artists um, in the world, mm-hmm. uh, in traveling the world. Just in being surrounded by amazing people. What's the most challenging part about being Roy Bennett? Just being me. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, <laughs> it's, you know, being a Gemini. You got things oh, going on. Um, <laughs> preaching to the choir. <laughs> <laughs> constant struggle. Constant struggle. Um, <laughs> it's, it's the most challenging. I, I push myself all the time. I need to be better than I am. Mm-hmm. Mm. 
mm-hmm. on, and not just my work, just in life in general. Yeah. So. I get it. What's your highest career point to date? Oof. Don't know. Mm. Oh. Um, I think there's many of them. Obviously, the opening night in Detroit on Purple Rain mm-hmm. was pretty I wild. I was there. Mm-hmm. I was there. Rain That's of flowers. Right, mm-hmm. right off yes, the top. Sure I was. <laughs> I was there. The first time I worked with Paul McCartney, we opened up in Oakland it was just watching people cry. Oh, wow. They're, they're so moved because it, he hadn't played in 10 years. Yeah. Oh, just, wow. Yeah. Um, Man. I don't know. All the, all the, you know, working with Trent Reznor, yeah. the Cure, and all, the, all those things. Yeah. They're, they're all... They're all special moments in my life. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I love that you mentioned Detroit because what most people don't know is that um, Detroit, we were hip to Prince. We oh, were yeah. already oh, totally. on the, we were leading the charge when it came to Prince. What was I it? Mean, was the DJ Mojo? Was Mojo. It? Electrifying yeah. Mojo. Oh, he was awesome. <laughs> the Electrifying Mojo. And at the time, I was a little boy. Uh, well, you know. 11, 12, something like that. But we had been into print, like Detroit as a whole, probably since Dirty Mind and Controversy. Mm -hmm. By the time 1999 came, you would go to a print show in Detroit and the guys were dressed like Prince, the Mm -hmm. guys were dressed like Morris, the girls Mm -hmm. were dressed like Vanity Six. Mm -hmm. It was a whole, this is pre-Purple Rain. Yeah. You know, those those days are really, so when you said that, that really hit me in a special spot because I, I was there. Okay. Um, what's been your biggest career regret? Oh, I don't want to talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really have any. No. No. Was there I'm, any project that was presented to you and then you didn't take it and you said, damn, I oh, no. took it? No, that never happened. Okay. Um, I passed on Brooklyn couple of artists okay um you know there was an artist i worked with that yeah it was it was good but there was a part of it i just like i kind of regret doing it okay i got and you. I, but i don't it's, i don't re, it's not saying regretting is a terrible thing because i don't really regret it it's mm-hmm. just had i had the foresight yeah i would have done it you would have mm. done it um what do you think the biggest misconception is about you <laughs> wow um i've i think because of the enormity of all the things that i've done that people mm-hmm. might think i have a huge ego mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but i don't mm-hmm. i mean i'm just still little roy from rhode island yeah. Uh, yeah. still you know yeah. my mother's son and yeah. i just it um, maybe, I don't know. I, I don't know what, I would probably think that would be something that mo- some people would think about me. Yeah. Hmm. That's interesting. If you could choose at this point in your life or for everything you've been through all, all your years here, if you could choose love or money, which would it be and why? Love? Why? Because money can't buy it. Mm. That's right. Mm. Yep. <laughs> What's your, what's your fondest memory of Prince? Just your fondest memory. Just your funniest, the one that makes you chuckle or the one that you think about randomly out of nowhere. Uh, just uh, when I used to go, this is a very controversial thing okay. too. All right. The lemon cake. Yes. Oh, <laughs> yes. Hey. Here we go. The gentleman. Yeah, but when okay. I, but the truth. Just spending time with him. Mm-hmm. Um, whether it was the lemon cake or, you know, he would talk because I was at the Chanhassen Inn. He would call me to come over. Mm-hmm. And, you know, just the times of hanging out with him, we watched Erase Our Head three times. Oh. The two of us sat in his living room, dead silent, watching this most monotonous, weird film. <laughs> and I think he just couldn't wrap his head around it, so he needed to watch it again. Yeah, mm. yeah. But yeah. we spent, you know, we talk about music and other artists that we like mm-hmm. and... Things, it was just those moments of just when it was the two of us, yeah. just hanging out, talking. Yeah. Yeah. Those are the things that I will always remember. Yeah. Always right. hold, hold close. Nice. Um, if you could trade places with one person for a day, who would it be and why? Hmm. Don't know if I'd want to be somebody else. 
I, I like being me. All right. <laughs> and uh, finish this sentence. If I could do it all over again, I would do the same thing. I have no regrets. To even I've been married four times. I wouldn't. I would just do the same process because of where it's led me to. Yeah. Mm. I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for all those pathways that I took. Yeah. You know, it was never easy. Some of the stuff, but yeah. um, no, I, I, I wouldn't change a thing. I have two beautiful ch- kids. Mm-hmm. Um, awesome. Have an awesome life. You That's know. Great. That's great. This has been a pleasure. Yes, it has been. Wow. Well, thank you. Thank you, my brother, my love. We love you so much. I love you too. Such an honor to have you here, taking the time, especially after, you know, having such a busy night last night. And you're here today. Thank you for joining us. Oh, my pleasure. On the podcast and hope to have you come back again. Sure. In the future, we could hang out. Absolutely. Great. Thank you. Thank you. (laughs) To Leroy Bennett, yes. Roy Bennett, yes. my brother. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. All right, and we will see you on the next episode of Apollonia Studio 6. Thank you. Thank you. We love you.